NATO concluded its summit in Chicago with a lengthy declaration by the member countries on issues ranging from which new countries could soon join the alliance to statements against nuclear proliferation and sexual violence. Front and center at the meeting, which wrapped up Monday night, was the future of an international military presence in Afghanistan, as the coalition begins to plan for the day when Afghanistan will both staff and fund its own military and police. But critics say NATO shouldn't sacrifice more dollars and lives to a failing mission. FSRN's Alice Olstein has more. As protesters continued to march and clash with police on the streets of Chicago on Monday, President Obama gave an update on the war in Afghanistan, saying 33,000 U.S. troops will come home by the end of the summer, and Afghan forces will take the lead in combat operations by the middle of next year. We also agreed on what NATO's relationship with Afghanistan will look like after 2014. NATO will continue to train, advise, and assist, and support Afghan forces as they grow stronger. Earlier this month, Afghan President Hamid Karzai announced that 75 percent of the country's population will soon be living in areas where Afghan troops have taken over security. But some national security analysts argue the country's military and police aren't yet up to the job. At Monday's press conference, President Obama responded to criticisms that 2014 is too soon to end NATO's combat role. No matter how much good we're doing and how outstanding our troops and our civilians and diplomats uh, are doing on the ground, 10 years in a country that's very different, uh, that's a strain, uh, not only on our folks, but also uh, on uh, that country, which at at a point is going to be very sensitive about its own sovereignty. Yet, President Obama signed a strategic partnership agreement with Afghanistan a few weeks ago that lays the ground for at least another decade of U.S. soldiers, diplomats, and private contractors in the country. And on Monday, NATO released a resolution calling for the immediate creation of a new non-combat mission in Afghanistan, focusing on training and assistance, and the continued funding of the Afghan military at a cost of about $4 billion per year. NATO will expect Afghanistan to cover these expenses itself by 2024, depending on its economic recovery. While some say the proposed schedule is too hasty, others say it's not quick enough. France's newly elected president, Francois Hollande, says he will withdraw all French combat troops from Afghanistan by the end of this year, and New Zealand announced Tuesday it will bring its soldiers home in 2013, a year ahead of schedule. Some members of the U.S. Congress have also called for accelerated withdrawal. Ohio Democrat Dennis Kucinich criticized NATO for framing Monday's agreement as an end to the war, saying, quote, these talks are simply about financing the next phase of the war. Kucinich is co-sponsoring a bill by California Democrat Barbara Lee to only fund the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan and defund all other aspects of the war. I will support any politician who will move forward and try to bring this thing to a screeching halt. That's Afghanistan veteran Jacob David George. He says his experience in combat inspired him to work for the passage of Barbara Lee's bill and other anti-war measures. We have effectively lost the war in Afghanistan, and the sooner we get out of there, the better. There's going to be violence, but there's also going to be resolve. Uh, And that resolve isn't going to come until we remove ourselves from the equation. George served three tours in Afghanistan between 2001 and 2004 and was one of several veterans to return his service medals this weekend at the Chicago protests against NATO. The oldest son of a chicken farming family in Arkansas, he described the moment he first began to question the morality and effectiveness of the war. First time I went out to the Pakistan border, we landed in a farmer's field and I ran off a helicopter and And this farmer looked at me like I was a demon or something, you know, of course, because I'm heavily armed. I'm covered in weapons and ammo and stuff. And, you know, he has every right to look at me like that. And I knew that fear in his eyes because if I saw someone land on my grandpa's farm and run off with a weapon, I would be pretty I would be pretty upset, too. And I would probably pick up a gun and fight back. And one of the things that really struck me while I was over there is, is that we have hillbilly farmers flying halfway around the world to fight and kill hillbilly farmers while the people of our nation starve. NATO's announcements included plans to boost its surveillance capabilities with five new Global Hawk drones. The nation's also committed to funding anti-piracy missions off the coast of Somalia and an air policing mission in the Baltic states, among other military efforts. 
They also encouraged the efforts of Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Georgia, and Macedonia to join the NATO alliance. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.